No, Batman's better. No, Hulk is better. Batman has the cooler costume, and he has all those crime-fighting gadgets. Oh yeah? Well, Hulk has incredible superhuman strength, Hulk smash. durability, and healing factors. So, Batman is a super smart detective and knows all forms of martial arts. Well, Hulk is so powerful, he doesn't need martial arts because he could smash Batman with his big green fist. Hulk smash. Oh yeah? Yeah! Batman! Hulk! Batman! Hulk! Batman! Hulk! Whoa, 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 what is all the commotion? Well, you see, Fanny over here has bad taste in superheroes. She thinks that Hulk is better than Batman. I mean, like, come on! What? Freddy is one worm short of a mud pie. What? You guys know what I mean. Uh, I guess, let me get this straight. You two are arguing over who is the better superhero? Yeah! Well, that's kind of silly. Superheroes are no silly matter, sir. I, I don't mean to offend you, but why can't both of you just appreciate the fact that you both like superheroes? Instead of being divided, you both should focus on the things that you share in common. Uh... Hey, this makes me think of what was going on in the early church. Except, much more serious than arguing over some make-believe superheroes. You see, God's church was being divided because they were arguing over who was the better church leader. Wow, really? But aren't all of us one family in Christ? Yeah, we are, but some of the earlier believers forgot that. Check out this new episode of Judge Julian so we can learn more about how God's people should be united around the gospel, the good news of Jesus that unifies us together as believers. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Julian. The people are real, the cases are real, and the rulings are final. This is Judge Julian. Welcome to Judge Julian. In today's case, we have two plaintiffs who believe that their church leader is the better one. This is case number one, Corinthians 1 to 6, Marcellus versus Cassius. You can all be seated. Your name is Marcellus, is that correct? You claim that you follow Paul? Yes, that's right. Your name is Cassius, is that correct? Yes. And you claim that you follow Apollos? Yes, Your Honor, that is correct. Okay, so can one of you tell me what's going on here? Well, we are both from the city of Corinth, which was an important part of the Roman Empire and is full of people from various cultural and religious backgrounds. Paul the Apostle visited us on his missionary journey. Paul stayed here for a year and a half. He told us the good news about Jesus, how God loves us and sent his son to die on the cross for our sins and then rose from the dead. At first, Paul will preach in the synagogues to tell Jews God's message but they refused to believe. So Paul began to preach to the Gentiles. Do you have anything to add? Yeah. Many Corinthians believed and were baptized. Then Paul went back to Antioch, continuing to tell people about Jesus and starting churches. About six years later, when Paul was starting a church in Ephesus, he heard that our church back here was struggling. Yes. It says here that the people in your church were arguing and suing each other. Eyewitnesses reports say that people in your church were living no different than those who were not believers at all. So is this the reason why Paul wrote the letter to the Corinthian church? Yes, your honor. You see, it was Paul who came to Corinth, so it only makes sense that I follow him. Yes, yes, but Apollos is an elegant man, so I follow him. <laughs> I'm reading Paul's letter right here, and I think you should listen to this. He says, is Christ divided? You are still following the ways of the world. Some of you are jealous and argue. So aren't you following the ways of the world? 
One of you says, I follow Paul. Another says, I follow Apollos. Aren't you acting like ordinary human beings? After all, what is Apollos and what is Paul? We are only people who serve. We helped you to believe. The Lord has given each of us our own work to do. I planted a seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. He is the more important one. The one who plants and the one who waters have the same purpose. The Lord will give each of them a reward for their work. We work together to serve God. We were all like God's field. What do you two have to say about this? Never thought of it that way. Yeah, Jesus came to bring people together, brothers and sisters in God's kingdom. Well, if that's true, then should Christians fight over which leader has the most wisdom or strength? No, Your Honor. But is most important is the gospel. Paul continues in his letter and says, The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You see, you two, God uses what seems foolish to the world, that is, God sending his one and only son to give his life for us, in order to bring salvation to the world. You're right, Your Honor. Believers should not boast about their self or other people. Yeah, no human is powerful or wiser than God. I remember when Paul preached. He didn't use fancy words so the people will think he was smart. He simply shared the good news about Jesus. Yes, indeed. Everyone in the church is united around Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins, then rose from the dead, bringing life and hope for all those who would believe. When we remember the gospel, we can live in unity with others. You're right, Your Honor. Well, you two, I think you've gotten the point. Case dismissed. Yes, God wants believers to live in such a way that people see us and know that we belong to Jesus and even cause them to want to follow Jesus. The unbelieving world should look at the church and realize that there's something extraordinary happening here. Because of the gospel, the church can humbly come together as one body and one family in Christ and can display that unity to the world. Wow, let's try to do that this week. <laughs> Friends, have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.